Hello guys, welcome back to another video on PS4 Linux. In this video, I'm going to teach you an alternative method to install distros onto your PS4. What you usually or conventionally do is copy all these files as you see on my desktop to a drive, to a USB drive, and then boot into the rescue shell and then run the command to install it, which extracts this distro onto the drive and creates partitions. But in this video, I'm going to show you an alternative method. In this method, we will be doing the installation part right now on our PC. So that as soon as you plug the USB drive onto your PS4, you're ready to run the distro, not install the distro. I hope you understand. It will be made clear by the end of the video. So I see two benefits of installing with this method. First, it saves time because the installation is much faster on the PC than what the PS4 would take. And the second benefit is that you can prevent many of the errors from popping up that you would usually see while installing the distro on the PS4. This is what I have seen when comparing the installation on the PS4 method with this method. And also remember that this tutorial is also going to double up as the installation instruction video for Pop! OS. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could run Pop! OS on your PS4 without actually installing it on the PS4 the way you do conventionally. All right. So first of all, what you're going to require is a Linux machine. Right now, I have Lubuntu running on the virtual machine. You do have the option of dual booting Ubuntu or any other distro with your current OS like Windows or something else. But uh, I have chosen to go with a virtual machine. If you don't know how you could run Linux on a virtual machine, I do have a video for that. You could go through that video. Actually, it's a video series where I teach every new beginner or a noob how they could build their first PS4 Linux distro. If you're interested, do check out the description, go through that. So right now you can see I'm running Lubuntu on a virtual machine. I'm using Lubuntu for this tutorial because I've generally seen that Fedora doesn't handle this process very well. So I would recommend choosing Ubuntu or Ubuntu based distros for this tutorial. So that was the first requirement, a Linux machine. The second thing is the distro that you plan on running. In this case, we're going to be running Pop! OS. So I do have the distro right here downloaded. You could find download links for all of these in the description. And then you're going to need the initram FS image and the kernel image that is a BZ image. All right. Once you have all of these, you're going to require your USB drive plugged into your PC. And at the same time, you're also going to require a piece of software called Gparted. So in my case, I already have it installed. So in case you don't have it, all you have to do is open up a terminal and type sudo space apt space install space Gparted and then press enter. If you are on Fedora, I would suggest you replace this apt with DNF. That's it. All right. So once you have it installed on your PC, now we're going to run Gparted. For that, we're going to open a terminal and type sudo space Gparted and press enter. Now at this step, I'm assuming that you already have plugged a USB drive in. You can go to this device selection menu and choose your drive. In my case, it is this slash dev slash stb. And then I'm going to click on it. So here we have our drive with two partitions. Before proceeding further, I would like to warn again and again that this will wipe your whole device out, this specific USB drive out. So make sure that you have a backup of all the important data before you proceed with this process. In the first step, we're going to unmount all these partitions. So I'm going to go to the first partition, right click on it and then click on unmount. Then go to the second partition, right click on it and then click on unmount. And then what we're going to do is click on device, then create partition table. Make sure that MS-DOS is selected and click on apply. This is your last chance to save any data that might be hanging around in your drive. So make sure that you have backed it up because once I click on apply, the whole data is gone. All right. So I'm going to click on apply. And as you can see, there's a new drive right now. Uh, making sure that this is highlighted, this unallocated space is highlighted. I'm going to click on this thing. And then I'm going to change the file system to FAT32 and change this number to 50. So I'm basically allotting 50 MB to this FAT32 drive. And then I'm going to click on add and then making sure that this unallocated space is highlighted. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to provide the label that is PSZ touch. Now, depending on the initram FS image you're using, this might change. This value might change in some cases. For example, if you're using IT Mania's Ubuntu initram FS image, you might have to change it to Ubuntu. So this will depend on the initram FS image you're using. If you have any doubts, you can always check my article on this. I have talked in detail about this. You could also comment there if still confusion arises. All right. So making sure that the label is properly set. I'm going to make sure that the file system is ext4 and we don't have to change the size to anything else because the remaining part of the hard drive will be allotted to this partition. All right. And then I'm going to click on add. As you can see, we have both these drives set up and now we're going to finalize the changes by clicking on the green tick and then clicking on apply.
Now I'm going to click on close. And I'm also going to close this window. Now I'm going to go to the file manager to see if the partitions have been properly mounted. So here we have it. Here we have both these partitions. The first one is PS Zeta Arch and the second one is the FAT32 partition. By clicking on them, you have successfully mounted them. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy the initram FS image and BZ image. Both of these to this particular drive that is the 52 MB volume that is the FAT32 drive. All right. So I have pasted it right here. The next step would be extracting the distro to this partition that is PS Zeta Arch partition. To do that, all you have to do is open up a terminal then type sudo space tar space hyphen xv capital j pf space and then you'll need the path to your distro i'm going to right click here copy and then i'm going to paste it right here but we don't need this file part so i'm going to remove that and yeah that's it i'm going to go to the end of this command and then give a space again hyphen capital c space again and then we're going to choose a destination, which is PSZ touch partition. So I'm going to right click here, copy the path, right click here, paste it, and then press enter. You'll have to provide your password. And this process is going to take some time, depending on what kind of drive you're using. Obviously, this would be faster on an SSD. If you're using an HDD, this is going to take some time. So we're going to wait out for the process to complete and then proceed. All right. That's it, the extraction is done and essentially the installation is done. Now, if you notice here, we see some files that have these icons on them. These are symbolic links, all right? So this is the reason why I want you to extract these files on a Linux machine because these symbolic files are not handled well by Windows machines, okay? So now we are ready to run this distro directly on our PS4. Let us check if this works or not, all right? Now with the USB drive plugged into my PS4, I'm gonna choose the 2GB variant of the payload that is 2gb vram variant of the payload and i'm going to inject it we're going to wait for the rescue shell to appear let's see how it goes and there we have the unit ram fs which is successfully loaded and there we have an error but don't worry this is expected there is a problem with pop os but this can be easily remedied all you have to do here is type resume hyphen boot and then press enter and here you have the login screen of pop os let me try to log in and see if everything is working fine all right And yep, here we have the desktop of Pop OS that I've made for you guys. You can also download this distro right in the description. I've left a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, my friends. If you did like this tutorial and if you would like more tutorials like these, don't forget to click on that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also click on that bell button and also check out my blog. I recommend that you also join our email subscription list so that you get the updates directly to your email. All right. Till I see you in the next video. Bye guys. Good luck.